welcome once more to my channel. <laughs> Hello everyone, uh, how are you doing? This is so weird. I honestly don't really love doing voiceovers. I feel like my voice is kinda creepy. So this week I'm bringing you a paint with me. It's inspired by one of my favorite YouTubers called Jimena Renault. I love her content, it's so aesthetic. I saw these kind of videos for the first time in her channel, so I just wanted to point that out. I will be leaving her channel in the description box below so you can enjoy it. My video is probably not gonna be that aesthetic, I'm warning you now. But yeah, this is me getting ready. I would have left the original audio for the ASMR moment, but my flatmates were playing a YouTube video in the background, so yeah. These are my materials. I was so glad my washes didn't dry out. I got them a few months ago, and after doing my first painting, I abandoned them for a bit. I always do the same with everything, literally, I start it and I don't finish it, or I never touch it again at all. So yeah, that's a constant in my life. These are the two type of papers that I use. I basically use watercolor papers. I've got this slightly bigger travel watercolor book. I believe it's an A5. And then I got a watercolor postcards um, notebook. I never know how to say that. I got them both at the London Graphic Center, but both the simple set of brushes that I'm using and the gouaches, I got them on Amazon. I don't feel comfortable saying that I buy stuff on Amazon anymore. I don't know why. Maybe that makes me human. With brushes, honestly, I don't need a huge variety of them. I always use the same ones, even with makeup. I am fine with using two or three brushes, as long as I have a tinier one for the details and a bigger one for, you know, the biggest areas of color, if I'm blocking out at the beginning especially. Sometimes I also use this pocket color wheel that I got in Baltimore to help me out in terms of blending or which color to add, but to be honest, I don't find myself using it that much because I'm mostly very intuitive and daring when mixing colors, which sometimes goes wrong. But normally I feel like I know enough color theory to not mess things up that much. Alright, for my first painting, I used a postcard as a sort of warm up. I chose to paint this underwater scene from Ponyo, which I am aware that I'm not the most original person. But here I am, I am late to the game, but there's something magical about Ghibli scenes and the way the backgrounds are painted. I don't know, they are just like so comfy and so cozy to paint. But yeah, going back to the topic, with gouaches as they are this sort of mixture between oil and watercolor, they dry way faster than oil but slower than watercolors. They are opaque enough, I feel, in order for you to play more with layers. I have personally been using watercolors for a really long time since I was a kid. Growing up, it was my thing, and I do love the freedom that gouaches give me. It's like stepping up my painting game without committing to oils and everything that comes with that. It's quite scary and daunting. I've never used oils and I don't know if I will. I low-key want to, but it's quite expensive. It's kind of interesting the fact that growing up, I loved using colors, I even had a couple of lessons on color theory, and I grew up from that phase when I got to uni. I sort of prefer now these gloomy, muted, desaturated color palettes, and yeah, it's quite interesting to see that shift on my personal taste. I feel like I have grown more goth and emo with time, if liking that sort of color palette makes you an emo, of course. This is the next day, I went out to one of my favorite places, the Old Brompton Cemetery. This place has such a weird beauty, it's kinda creepy, but I think that's one of the reasons why I love it so much. The lighting was wonderful, and I am obsessed with it. I visit every time that I can, because it's not really far from home. So yeah, I sat and I sketched with a pen, which is something that I 
almost never do, but I'm trying to get rid of my perfectionism. So it's a good way of not being able to error your mistakes. Mm, I guess that's a good tip, actually. Don't be afraid of ruining your sketchbook. Anyway, I wanted this video to be a sort of catch up between me and G. And to be honest, I don't have much to tell. There's not a lot of stuff going on right now in my life. Lately, since I left my work, I've been spending all my time at home. Obviously, I go out here and there, but most of the times I am at home thinking and overthinking. I've questioned myself a lot about what is it that I want to do next, and even my career choices, which I thought I did set this in stone a couple of years ago, but I do have my doubts from time to time, guys, and it's a little bit scary, I have to say. I feel like a lot of people, after they graduate from uni, they get this sort of crisis, and I'm definitely going through it right now, and it's so hard i don't know if this happens to you but i feel like sometimes older people they don't realize how hard it is to be young nowadays i'm talking about when i talk with my parents and older people around me it's like they don't fully grasp how hard it is to cultivate a long-term mentality when everything is so instant now and there's so much competitiveness and everybody wants the same thing and if you it feels honestly like you have to battle every single day. You have to battle to get the most out of yourself. I definitely feel like the world today is such a different place from what my parents and older generations had to deal with. Not because I was alive back then, but from what I've been told and from the mentality that I see older generations have, I kind of perceive that they think it's easier than it is. Maybe I'm going back to my angry teenage years of like, older people don't get us, but I think there's a little bit of truth to that, you know? And the reality of it all is that we will never know exactly how it is to be somebody else. I feel like I'm going out of the tangent right now. <laughs> going back to what I was saying, it's been really useful for me to remind myself that it doesn't always have to be easy. Sometimes you have to push yourself in order to get better and find out new ways of doing things. I think we all know that. But for a while, I had this constant inner fight between something being your passion or not. I'm not articulating myself really well here. What I'm trying to say, I'm gonna give you guys an example, is that I question myself and the stuff that I liked and I kind of told myself that I wasn't passionate enough to have a career in art, that some other people were way more passionate than I was, and that they had this huge interest in the field, and I didn't have it. I felt so fragmented for a while, but with time, I came to terms with the fact that art is hard, and dedication is Key. If you have enough dedication to not give up when things get difficult, that's a good sign and it's enough. You know, it doesn't always have to be a torture, but it also doesn't always need to be effortless and beautiful, if that makes sense. What I'm taking out from this crisis, really, is that everybody has their own path and their own lessons that they have to learn. And I'm gonna stop now because it feels like I'm preaching when I'm not. Yeah, I'm getting really passionate, so let's go back to guashes for a second. <laughs> I think with me and guashes, I do find it challenging to guess in which order to paint, aka thinking in layers. It feels so easy when I do it in Photoshop, and in real life, I don't know why, it feels so much challenging. Also, working with values and contrast can be a little bit of a struggle for me. It's really useful for me to know when to stop adding details and call it a day, because I could go on forever. I can get so lost in detail. It's kind of crazy. Something else that is proving to be quite revealing, I'd say, in that sense, is trying to produce a YouTube video every week and truly wrapping up what you have and uploading it to the internet as it is, because I could go on forever. And it's almost paradoxical if you think about it, but having too much freedom doesn't always make you feel free. This is getting too intense. I'm sorry, guys, again. So yeah, it's good to work with limit to at least get stuff done. That's what I meant. Okay, so this is the final result of the last painting that I did. It took me, honestly, like, solid two hours. It took me a lot of time. Making the areas that are being lit truly stand out and making the darker areas deep enough, that was a struggle. I'm personally really glad with the outcome. It's not exact copy, but 
you know, it doesn't have to. Okay, so I think this has been all for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this sort of different video on my channel. As always, subscribe to my channel so then you don't miss any of my marvelous content and follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Dinest. I'll see you guys in the next one and bye!